In this video, we're going to go over the advanced live scoring features in TurboStats Evolution for Basketball. First thing you want to do is create a new team or open up an existing team. Then go over into the game screen. Okay, I'm going to delete this game and create a new one. I could just right click and hit delete game. And then just hit the add game button. And here you can put in the date and the time of the game. Okay, and then you can pick the type of game, whether it was a conference or a non-conference game. Uh, you could add your own types by clicking New. I'm going to just say non-conference. And then um, on the venue, you can just pick the venue or click New. And if you're going to track the complete stats for the opponent and you want to see all their players, uh, create a separate team in TurboStats for that opponent so you could select that team. Otherwise, you could use the opponent's file and enter all the opponents in one opponent's database. You'll be prompted to enter the name of the opponent each time as well, but just pick the opponent's file. For this one, I'm going to pick the actual team file I created. Okay, and I'm going to hit Create Game, and it's going to create the game and open up the game in the live scoring. Okay, let me minimize the background. And so with the advanced scoring, uh, the first thing you do always is go into your preferences and make sure you have the right minutes played, number of periods, and so on. If you go into the scoring modes, we're going to be in expert mode. So make sure you switch to advanced or expert mode. I'm going to have expert mode with photos. And then we can decide whether we're going to track uh, the point guard. So if I want to track the stats for the point guard, I can click on this option here, and I do have to put the ball in the hands of the point guard, so it'll keep track of who the point guard was for each event. And so I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger now. If I click on this button, I could drag it and make it bigger. If I click the maximum button, I, I can maximize it on my tablet. But um, I need to scale it up uh, because of the way I'm working here on this demo, so I'm just going to scale it. Okay, now at the bottom here, I could decide whether I want to have events on or if I want to have scout mode on where I could track each play. And for this video, I'm going to turn the scout mode option on. So now the first thing you do is you add the players into the game, and then you could just uh, drag and drop them if you want. Like I could drag a player and put them in the position that I want. Okay, I could double click and it'll take the next available position. Okay, so I'm going to just put it in what I think is the starters in this game. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll put those players in. And let me set up uh, for the other team their five players. Okay. And so uh, at the top you have your sub bar. If players are coming in the game, you could pre-tag them and then um, swap them in by just right-clicking or swiping the players to go out. Or you could just drag and drop a player in for another player. Well, let's go into our play book and let's just look what our playbook looks like here. And then I could hit add plays and show you how you could set yours up. You just click on the add plays and you can come in here. If you want to make a, you know one play, which is really just a title for the group of plays, like inbounds plays, plays against the zone, that kind of thing, you can. It's just a text file. Um, and, you know, just put whatever you want in here, whatever your play calls are you actually be able to have options for each play too. So uh, if I wanted to create uh, a play called Zipper and I want to run a specific option like option C, okay, I can click on that and just enter that particular option in that play. Let me adjust my scale, try to make that fit in there a little bit better. Um, okay, so again, click the play and I can clear it and start over again, pick the play, and then pick the option. Okay? So, um, you could pick the play from the side, too, if I hit this back button. Okay, um, I'm going to close this here. If I hit the back button here, it'll show the plays on this side. So, if I was going to do subbing for this team and I hit the plays here, I could also look at the scouting down at the bottom here. Okay, so the advantage of having the plays on this side is that I could see my scouting. And so let's go over uh, an event from the game and we'll score it. I'm going to go into the play-by-play -play here and just try to put it in. So we have a missed layup. So now uh, if you want to keep track of plays from the other team, you could you know, use the plays and you could have their plays down at the bottom or whatever. But let me just pick a play 
for the opponent here, and there was a miss, okay, on the floor in this location, we'll say, and the miss was made by uh, number four. Okay, and then it's asking me who the point guard is. So I got to drag this ball here and give it to the player who's going to be the point guard for each team. All right, so this way it'll keep track in the events of who was running the offense at the time. All right, so now in this play, um, there was a missed shot, but there was a block. So now I get the rebound, I'll hit block, and then I'll pick the player who had the block. And then um, it'll prompt me for the rebound, and then I pick the player who got the rebound. Okay, and then after that, we had a travel. So I'll click on the player, and I'll hit uh, turnover, traveling. All right, and if you notice, uh, there's one uh, event scored here. Um, and it's for uh, the other team here. So if you click on the plays here, oh, it didn't put it under other. That was the traveling play. So that actually counted as a play. So now let's just go through uh, an event here. Now we have another missed shot by number. I uh, say we're going to have another miss. I'm not going to put a play in for the opponent here. And then we have a rebound. Okay, and now from that we have a mystery pointer. So now I'm going to pick a play. So I'm going to say we ran UCLA. Okay, if you want to pick an option, option B. Uh, this is a little off on my screen here, so I'm picking the wrong one. Let me clear it again. Um, so let me... UCLA and B. I must be over here a little bit. It's just a little off from the resolution that I had to put it in. So um, you don't have to put options. You could just enter the plays and not worry about the options. So on that option, we had a missed three-pointer. So I'm click on the spot, and I'm going to say miss, and it was by number three. Uh, no, it was uh, by number five. Okay, so now if I look here, I got UCLA. I ran it once. I have no efficiency. I didn't make any baskets. Now who got the rebound? Did we get a rebound on it? Yes, we got an offensive rebound. Okay, I click on the player, and if you notice now, it gave a rebound for that play. So it knew it was the same play running, and there's an offensive rebound on here. And that affects your offensive efficiency, because the offensive rebound, uh, you don't lose a possession. So your points per possession would be uh, preserved, because now you got the rebound. So now we're going to run another uh, play here now, because we had an offensive rebound. And now let's just run... Um, a second play. Now you can call this breakdown too. There's a way to enter it as a breakdown play. Um, you know, you could just figure breakdown is like your play didn't work and you're and you're trying to just comp, you know improvise at the time. That's that's a play called breakdown. A lot of the analytics Linus analysts uh, use that nomenclature. But uh, we have a made basket here, so we have a missed jumper. And we got an offensive rebound, and then we're going to make a three-point shot. So uh, let's run another play, and I could pick it up from here, or I could pick it on the side here. Four out, and um, I'm not going to put an option in, and we got a made three-pointer. Okay, so here we got made. Okay, and so now if you look at the plays here now, you have um, four out, and it had one attempt and it made three points, so the offensive efficiency is 300. Now, offensive efficiency is points per possession times 100. So, really, that's three points per possession. If we run that same play again, four out. Let's see if there was an assist on that play. Yeah, let me give an assist. Okay, so um, if you want to see the scouting across the whole page, you can click the Scout button here at the top. And you can see the scouting when all the plays, if you want to sort, these are the highest efficiency of play. You could double click on it like that and you could sort. And there's various reports that you could switch here. You could do a defensive report, offense, and this is your point guard report. Who is not, who is the point guard, how many attempts, and what the efficiencies are of that particular point guard. Okay, then you got individual players, and you could do scores by period or just totals. And then you can just keep clicking. Now you could just do player metrics. And now we're back into our offensive plays. If I want to switch teams, I click on this team link, and I'll switch from one team to another. Okay, if I want to go back to the large chart, I just hit large chart, and now I'm back in. If I want to see events, I can see the individual events, and you'll notice in here the point guard number is listed uh, with that particular event. Now, if I switch the point guard to another player, okay, um, 
and you look at you know any play if that was the player and let's just do another event here um, there's a missed jumper again by the other team and then a rebound here and then um, we'll pick another play here there was um, I'm just going to add a play here, a three-pointer made again. Okay, so now we'll pick another play type. You could pick it here, or I can go hit the back button here and pick it here, or I could even hit the play button down at the bottom here and show them down at the bottom. Wherever you're more comfortable with your plays, okay, I could just pick UCLA again, and let's just say this is another miss shot here by number five, okay, and that spot on the floor. Okay, now you'll notice that if we go into the play, I'm going to hide the plays, and we're going to go back into the scout, we're going to see that UCLA now, okay, is the efficiency uh, went down here. Oh, I never had one, but I never made anything. We had two attempts in UCLA. Let me do four out. Okay, let's say we got a rebound on that, and then we'll do, um, you know, a play four out. Okay, and 33 had a dunk, maybe. Okay. Made. All right, and there was an assist. All right, so let's look at four out in here. So now we had two attempts, um, five points made, and here's the offensive point. How many possessions? Two possessions, and the offensive uh, offensive efficiency is 250 or 2.5 points per possession. All right, and that's so that's how it works. Now um, there's other metrics you could see during the game and you can go into the plus or minus and see the groups of five players in the game we only had one so that's all we see here and you could also see these game factors and um, um, you know uh, stats uh, by play type across um, all multiple games too I'll show you that as well if you wanted to do some defensive stats if you wanted to keep track of what defense they were in I could say they were in a 3-2 zone and now we just ran play, um, let's just say we ran a play called jumper, okay, and we made a basket off of it, and there was an assist. And so now when you come into the, you look at the events, okay, it's going to show in the defense, what defense they were in. So if I go into scouting, and I have offense, and I go defense, and I pick the other team, this is what we did against that team against their defense. So they were in a 3-2 and this is the stats versus that defense. So you can make a press break. You could change your defensive um, calls right here by going into this add box here. And each team has their own defensive um, box there. So um, you know so that's how you would change the defenses if you wanted to keep track of defense in the game. And let's just end this game here and I want to show you how you would Keep stats, you know, like if you want to look at reports across multiple games. All right, so I'm going to go back into the main screen here, and there's a scout button down here. And if I click on scout, okay, it's going to bring up the scouting screen. And if I want to pick on a filter, I could have filters in which games I want. If I click on filter events, I could filter what kind of events I want to see. Okay, and so if I want to see uh, what particular plays here that we ran, I could just say how many times did we run UCLA. And then I can hit search, and it will show across all the games how many times we ran that play. These are all the um, players who were involved in that play. And if I click on events, I can see you know that play here. See UCLA, we ran option A, option B. Okay, and then you can see um, you know all the stats and everything that you need to from this play by just you know going back to the scout mode, and you'll see the percentages. It'll list all the players who were involved in that play and the stat line. Okay, so that's how you would see these stats across multiple games, and you can pick on any type of play um, that you want, that you want to filter, you know, different kind of events like steals, uh, whatever, um, what period they were, they were in, okay, uh, made or missed shots. Okay, we could also track uncontested shots. I didn't show you that. Let me just go back in real quickly because that's, you know, maybe important to some teams. I'll go back into live scoring. And uh, you see the C here with the underscore, that's an uncontested shot. If I click on that, it puts a line under the shot. And I click on the player, and again, it wants me to pick the point guard because I have that on. Okay, but uncontested shots show up. If I want to see a shot chart 
for any one team while I'm in the live scoring I could just whatever team I click last if I click the button I see their shot chart so if I click a player here let me make a point card for them and then I click the button and that will show the shot chart for that team now anything in blue is a turnover a shot off a turnover anything in pink is a second chance shot so if I come here and click on that we see there were a couple there was one shot and another shot here that were second chance opportunities anything in gray is a shot against the zone so with the uh, shot chart colors you could really get an idea of what's happening in the game and so if you want to see the shot charts a little bit larger you can come into this screen here and choose shot chart and then uh, you can make this larger here and you can pick whose shot chart you want to see if you want to just see one team you can clear this team you want to see the first half versus the second half okay or both of them okay you could turn them on there just the first half Okay, and then you could just clear them and just pick any individual player if you wanted to see their charts. All right, so that's how this feature works. If you want to post this and make a box score, you can hit the box score button. If you want to game cast it, you click on game cast. If you have that functionality set up with us, it'll make a box score that someone can click on, and you could be watching this live game. You could have shot charts in here. If you're going to be scoring this um, from a you know a video or, or you have a video connected to it you'll be able to see um, you know the shot charts it does work on a phone if you hit the phone here and I refresh it'll have a, a mode for, and this is live game casting if you have this functionality on or you could use a post game just as a way to show your coaches the shot charts for the game and where they want to see this at halftime you could post this and they can look at it on their iPhone and see the shot charts and the stats at halftime that is game casting you have to have that feature and then you turn it on here and just leave this screen running and you can just minimize it and then as we're entering events I can pick a play type okay and made and assist you'll see at the bottom of your screen there'll be a white cloud icon that pops up and that lets you know that um, it's updating your game cast if you click on the cloud icon it'll give you a screen that uh, you could pop up here and open I'm going to drag it over here here and show you what it looks like okay this is your game cast so you don't want to close out of this just leave it minimized but if you click on the view button it'll take you right to the game casting page and there's an option here where you could just click on like a stat board and you could just see the stat board or five players stats and photos if you had photos of the players and they were up on the on the website you would see them there and this could be inserted into a video stream or just used in any way that you find uh, necessary this is during a live game you could have these uh, reports being sent up with the game caster okay um, that really covers it and so um, if you wanted to do multiple plus or minus type of reports across multiple games when you exit out of the game I'm gonna hit end game by the way the game factors are really handy if you turn the game factors on you will see the five or, or six game factors that are really key values that Dean Smith and Dean Oliver and other guys it came up come up with and you can see the plus or minus game factors between each team you can also see things like your bench points and points of transition and things like that okay so keep in mind that that's game factors and you click on it here um, if your screen is wide enough uh, like this if you have the scouting screen on the side if I click the scout if I want to score in this mode uh, I could have the game factors up here if I click on factors uh, I probably put them right at the top so I could have more things available if I want to set my screen up this way um, as opposed to you know scoring uh, with the smaller screen so um, that's how the, the system works and if you uh, one more thing I could show you is just the plus or minus reports. Um, if you come up into the utilities menu, go to compile stats, and uh, let's see here. I know it's combination reports for all games. You can click how many games you want to go back and hit OK, and it'll show you the all the different five player um, combos in the reports and you can pick the last five games, the last two games whatever number of games you want to go back and so remember to get to the scout you click on the scout button here and then click on these little filters to determine how you want to make your reports okay that covers everything for uh, the um, you know advanced features in TurboSats for basketball thank you for watching